Earlier this year, I made a video on finding your 3D printer's max flow rate using an awesome tool inside of Orca Slicer. Although I still use others, especially when testing printers, this has really become my daily driver. From its inception in July of last year, there have been frequent updates expanding on the already great slicer. Last month, Orca Slicer dropped three betas and the official release of version 1.6.4. This came with many quality of life improvements as well as some really nice advancements. Per usual, there are far too many to cover them all, but in today's video, we are gonna take a look at a few of my favorites. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printers and are constantly expanding. Their most recent NG Revo combines E3D's rapid change Revo technology with their popular NG extruder. I've been running their upgrades for over three years and have printed everything from PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they are US based and all of their products are machined in house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop in replacements in most instances. This expedites the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again quickly. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. First up, we have the addition of mouse ear brims, which was ported over from Super Slicer. I actually made a video on how to create mouse ears some time ago, which can be really helpful for parts with sharp corners or sections of a model that tend to warp. Unlike a traditional brim that completely surrounds your model, these are like micro brims that can be set at specific points. They're easier to remove, take less time to print, and use less material. Unlike the manual method I previously showed, this version is auto-generated based on a few parameters. To enable mouse ears, select it from the brim type drop-down menu. For customization, you can enter the brim width, which sets the total width of each mouse ear, and the object gap, which is how much space you want from your model to the mouse ear. This determines how easy it will be to remove the brim. I recommend starting with the point one default. Since the point of a brim is to prevent your part from warping, you really don't want a very large gap. You also get some control over where on the outer perimeter these should be generated. Brim ear max angle can be set from zero to 180. This checks points or lines on the outer perimeter, and if they are within the max angle set, a mouse ear will be generated. Brim ear detection radius lets you set the length one of the lines or points must be in order to generate a brim. This prevents mouse ears from being generated on tiny features that may not need them. Next up, we have Make Overhang Printable. This is a port from Cura that I had not previously seen or used. A rough summary is that it makes models that would typically need supports not need them by modifying their geometry. To enable this, check Make Overhang Printable under Advanced in the Quality tab. There are two settings that can customize its behavior. The first is Make Overhang Printable Maximum Angle. The range for this is between 0 and 90. This lets you set the maximum angle you feel your printer can accomplish. Anything over that angle in your model will be modified to make it within your specified max value. The second is Make Overhang Printable Hole Area. This is specifically for models with holes in the bottom. The value you set here is the maximum area you're okay with for any of these holes. Anything over that amount will be completely filled. This tool can be great for all sorts of models, from organic pieces to functional parts. The key is to remember that you are modifying the part's geometry, so you'll need to make sure it's not changing a portion that is critical for the function of the part. There's now the ability to set chamber temperature per material. This is great news for anyone printing with warp-prone materials that has a chamber thermistor. It allows for a heater or bed heat soak to bring your printer's internal temps to the specified value before a print starts. This can be found in any filament above the nozzle and bed in the print temperature settings. One of my favorite parts of Orca Slicer is all of its built-in calibration tools. With this update, pressure advanced testing has added Ellis pattern as an option, which I prefer over the existing line choice. In addition, the pressure advanced tests now use a minimum speed of 100 millimeters a second to make it easier to determine the correct values. The exception to this is if it exceeds your set max volumetric flow. Currently, I use Orca Slicer for both my Bamboo and non-Bamboo Lab printers. For those of you not using Bamboo printers or running in LAN only, there's now a stealth mode that can be activated under Preferences. This prevents Bamboo's health management system from being able to connect to the printer. This system is used to notify you when there is an abnormal status detected from the printer. If you want to read up more on what the HMS is, I will have a link down below in the description over to Bamboo Lab's official wiki. 
If you're a Mac user like me, you'll be happy to know that this latest version has been notarized. Previously, to install Orca Slicer on a Mac, you had to go execute a command in the terminal and go under privacy settings each time you installed an update. With this version, download the DMG file to your computer, drag Orca Slicer into the Applications folder from the Finder window, and you're good to go. There's also a Windows installer available, which is great to see. There are many other features that have been added or tweaked, including ports from the latest version of Bamboo Studio. One thing I loved seeing when going through the GitHub change logs and pull requests was just how many community members were contributing features to Orca Slicer. The 1.6.4 release had 14 new contributors. In addition to Codebase, there are also members that are helping maintain and update translations. There are currently 14 different language options, which is something I think is really cool to see. I've been a big fan of Orca Slicer since the first time I used it, and I'm thrilled to see it continue to grow. If you haven't already, I highly recommend downloading it and trying it out for yourself. I'll have a link in the description over to the GitHub where you can download the latest release. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite feature in Orca Slicer is and if there's something specific that you would like to see added. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.